You never forget your first, or your first with a new chip, or lightest, or cheapest, or biggest flop. As PC Mag celebrates its 40th anniversary, let's go over six systems that had the greatest impact on us and the industry, from a 16K beige box to a cutting edge convertible. The first one is an obvious one. Indeed, PC Mag owes its entire existence to that first IBM PC, so it's only natural for us to begin with it, even though it falls just outside of our 40-year range. The impact of the IBM PC Model 5150 cannot be overstated. In 1981, PCs weren't commodities. Buyers of the Model 5150 paid $1565 for a unit with 16K RAM, no monitor you connected to a TV set, and no disk drives. A loaded system with 64K of memory, one floppy drive, and a monochrome monitor cost about $3,000. The 5150's design made several compromises. Its Intel 888 CPU had 16-bit registers but an 8-bit external data bus, which allowed cheaper support and peripheral chips. But it looked forward with five expansion slots for graphics, floppy drive controller, parallel and serial port, sound, modem, networking, and other cards. Its springy, clicky keyboard remains to this day an industry legend. The IBM brand and a port of 1979's Apple II spreadsheet VisiCalc made the 5150 a hit in corporate offices. Big Blue's decision to publish specs for the system bus, memory map, and expansion slots created a thriving ecosystem of third-party products. Within months, the PC was an unstoppable force, and so was PC Magazine. Two days after the legendary 1984 Super Bowl commercial, Apple released its Titanic Macintosh, bringing the mass market a compact all-in-one desktop with a graphical user interface and mouse. Suddenly, pointing and clicking at icons of files, folders, and a trash can was a fundamental shift from memorizing and typing the cryptic commands just as selecting text by swiping a mouse was. In their respective first years of production, Apple sold almost three times as many Macintoshes as IBM's did PCs, despite less than a quarter of the software library. In 1985, the Macintosh got its killer app, Desktop Publishing, with all this PageMaker and the Apple LaserWriter printer. Bill McCrone, then editor-in-chief, wrote, It's difficult to imagine a microcomputer less like a PC. The looming face-off between IBM and Apple is nothing less than a battle for the hearts and minds of men. The Mac is a conscious effort to improve the breed to make the lot of computer users better. Some may question the results, but the sincerity of Macintosh's design is indisputable. By 1988, there were numerous laptop PCs to choose from, but many of them weighed 10 or even 15 pounds and required a power outlet. Consumers clamored for something thin and light enough to call a notebook instead of a laptop. The Toshiba T1000 was a popular choice at only 6.5 pounds with MS-DOS 2.11 in ROM, but it had a dim, low-contrast display. Enter the NEC Ultralight. Starting at $2,999, it weighed just 4.4 pounds with a battery that lasted a whole two hours despite a backlit 9.5-inch monochrome screen. The Ultralight combined an 8086-compatible 9.8MHz NEC V30 processor with 640K of memory and a 1MB or 2MB silicon hard disk. A 2400 BPS modem was built in. Lotus 123, WordPerfect, and Microsoft Works were available on ROM cards. Screens, batteries, and solid-state storage have come a long way. But in its day, the NEC Ultralight was a stunner. If you ask someone to name an all-in-one PC, an integrated design rather than a separate tower, monitor, and speakers, chances are it'll be the Apple iMac. Even though it didn't do it first, it's certainly the most recognizable today. The iMac G3 of 1998, which would ultimately be available in 13 colors, had a 15-inch CRT with a 1024 by 768 pixel resolution in a translucent, gumdrop design with a carrying handle on top. It was the first PC to abandon the 3.5-inch floppy drive, which Apple declared was becoming obsolete in a world of recordable CDs and the internet. It was also the first to adopt USB ports for its keyboard and mouse, the latter in a round hockey puck that nobody liked. There were other epic all-in-ones prior, and there have been many since, but the Apple iMac blew it all sky high. Nelson Gonzalez and Alex Aguila started building PCs in Miami in 1996, specializing in desktops optimized for Doom or Quake. For some years, Alienware PCs were conventional rectangular towers, despite the three graphics cards and other exotic hardware inside. But in 2003, the Predator 1 premiered, a swoopy, curved chassis with prominent side fins and the spooky Alien Head logo that still decorates the firm's desktops and laptops. Available in a rainbow of neon colors, the 3599 tower was a hit. It packed its spacey looks with a potent Pentium 4 processor and NVIDIA's 256MB GeForce FX 5900 Ultra GPU. The age of the extreme gaming rig had begun, and it continued after Dell acquired the company in 2006. Through the first decade of the 2000s, Microsoft pushed manufacturers to make unwieldy, unwanted tablet PCs. They were heavy touchscreen systems designed for pen input and handwriting recognition. None were particularly useful. And the 2010 smash hit that was the Apple's iPad turned the attempts at it into landfill. At January 2012 CES, however, Lenovo unveiled what the tablet PC should have been, the IdeaPad Yoga 13. When it reached Best Buy in October for $10.99, it instantly redefined the 2-in-1 convertible with a brilliantly simple design. 
Instead of pivoting, the laptop screen just kept opening, folding back 360 degrees to put it and the keyboard back to back. Feeling the keys beneath your fingers as you held the unit in tablet mode took a little getting used to, but the Yoga also worked in two in-between modes, an easel or kiosk mode for PowerPoint presentations, and an inverted V tent mode for poking at the touchscreen apps while the system rested on an airplane tray table. The flip and fold convertible made so much sense that Acer, HP, Dell, Asus, and basically everyone except Apple quickly copied it. Today, it's a versatile alternative to conventional clamshells, and they're available in every size and price range for both Windows and Chromebooks. For more, read our full story on not just six, but the 20 most influential PCs of the past 40 years on PCMag.com.